growing up in an environment like this, it's like uh, it's like a nine-year-old's paradise. We get so much snow here. I, don't, I haven't been anywhere else in the world to get so much snow. You can't sled in. Ski touring takes too long. The only access is helicopter. And what I see it as is this arena, this arena that brings the best out of people. What are the uh, main avalanche problems in the bulletin this morning? Uh, the main problems are still uh, t with the 90 centimeters of new snow, they're concerned about the slab that sits on all your weak layers. Uh, and yeah, just expect the slab to be reactive to human triggering. Well, awesome, Dad. It's snowing. Now looks like two centimeters an hour. And we'll see if we actually get a sunny break today. Well, April 86, my parents were guiding, mom included and we're was approached by the guy that put together the, uh, the lodge because he needed to run back to Europe to save his marriage. My parents saw the opportunity and uh, decided to transfer their life into running tours out of the chalet. If you look closely in one of the local photos, uh, my dad's busting a champagne bottle, the big top hat, my mom's got a bow tie, but if you look close, even after that day of guiding, my mom's actually got a massive belly. And that's me. A month later, I was born into the operation. There's stories that I don't really remember of my mom going ski touring for the day. She put me in a toboggan, bundled me all up and down jackets, and she'd ski tour me to the bottom of a slope. And then she'd leave me at the bottom. At least I was bundled up. She'd lap runs as I was sitting there watching her. <laughs> my dad always actually gave me the fast groups. I always got to guide the fast groups up here because I was just so keen to pound out laps. I was so keen to show people my, uh, my local zone. I wanted to see people, and there's such a fulfillment at a young age to show people the, this most incredible experience of their lives. <laughs> that was stopped! <laughs> I think the thing about being in this type of terrain is going out with someone that really knows the place, and Marty grew up here, so we couldn't have anyone better to take us around. He said he's hit pretty much every drop, every pillow in this area. And so, we scored the goods. <laughs> so I think the best way to, to sum that up is uh, if you're a boxer going into the ring and you're ready to take on your opponent for the day, if your coach tells you your opponent has considerable hazard, you're not really set up for success. You need to know the actual concerns. I think initially, when you think of the blanket, uh, you see pillows, you see deep snow, and that's what, that attracts you. You're definitely drawn to the fact that you're gonna have some of the best skiing in the world. But what keeps you here is, is the feeling. There's a few places on Earth where you can actually escape uh, screen time. We don't have Wi-Fi up here. We're in the middle of nowhere. We're totally away from the outside world. Blanket life has been amazing. To get away from all screens for four days is a real luxury. To detach yourself from that and just be close to new and new people and make connections is really good. So, yeah, it's awesome. One thing I've been super impressed with, uh, given how remote we are, is how truly amazing and plush the amenities are. There's a magic where we bring the nine-year-old out of everyone. That stoke and that energy of going out skiing. You fall asleep at night and it's snowing and the first thing you wake up in the morning, you look out the door and it's snow another 30 centimeters. That stoke that you had as a kid is here. I feel like the Blanket Chalet is the dream we've all dreamt about. Shorts. 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 Shorts.